Women representing more than 170 indigenous communities in Brazil resumed protests to demand justice, freedom and recognition of the demarcation of their ancestral lands. South Africa on Friday launched the main phase of a global COVID-19 vaccine study on children and teenagers led by Chinese biopharmaceutical company Sinovac Biotech. Palestinians continue to protest Israeli abuses this Friday as the regime announced it had captured two of the six Palestinian prisoners who escaped from the Jubera jail earlier this week. From the headquarters of Teliso English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south, I'm Katrina Goss. We begin in Brazil where indigenous women representing over 170 communities continued their protest to demand justice, freedom and recognition of the demarcation of their ancestral lands. Our correspondent Ignacio Limas has the details. Greetings. More than 4,000 indigenous women are protesting this Friday in Brasilia, Brazil's federal district and administrative capital. They are fighting for their rights to stay in their lands. This is the second march of indigenous women in Brazil, and it comes in the context of the Supreme Court's voting on the time frame argument, the thesis that aims to remove indigenous people from their lands demarcated in Brazil. This process is correlated with a thesis that pretends to not recognize those territories where they cannot prove that they lived there before 1988, when the country's constitution was reformed. In this context, indigenous women claim for their rights to stay in their territories and that the relation between the Brazilian state and the indigenous people is not broken. With recognition to their rights to have their own livelihood, their own production methods, as established in the 1988 constitution. So, this process that began some months ago, but the Supreme Court continues to postpone, will continue next week. And, in that context, indigenous women are mobilizing. Something worth noting is that they had not mobilized previously in the last days despite they were here in Brasilia due to fears and precaution in the face of pro-Bolsonaro demonstrators that could be armed. So, to prevent clashes, indigenous women decided to wait until today. Also, something important to note is the support of Brazil's agribusiness support to pro-Bolsonaro demonstrators this week and, in contrast to the interest of agrobusinesses over indigenous lands, it is precisely indigenous women demonstrating today here in Brasilia. To conclude, next week the voting on the time frame argument will continue in the Supreme Court. Minister Elson Fakina has recognized the indigenous rights to stay in their lands, recognizing the history of these indigenous territories. So, there is a good start with the voting in favor of indigenous people. We will have to wait in the upcoming days to know what is the Supreme Court's decision. Meanwhile, indigenous women are demonstrating here in Brasilia. The so-called election silence period has begun in Argentina ahead of Sunday's primaries to define the candidates for the November legislative elections. In accordance with Article 64 of the National Electoral Code, as of this Friday, political acts and campaigning activities are prohibited. According to the regulations, social networks will also be monitored during the electoral silence period. The Electoral Authority explained that these rules are dictated so that Argentines can reflect without interference on who they're going to vote for before heading to exercise their right on Sunday, complying with the biosecurity measures in place. Russia's foreign ministry has warned of possible external interference in the talks between the Venezuelan government and opposition sectors and stressed that only Venezuelans can determine their future on the basis of mutual respect and without foreign interference. In a statement, the ministry notes that as a supporter of the negotiation process between the government and Venezuelan opposition sectors hosted by Mexico, Russia calls on all members of the international community to contribute to creating the most favourable and constructive atmosphere for the talks. In this regard, the ministry points to actions by external actors that risk undermining the fragile trust that has developed between the parties. In particular, it refers to the politically motivated ca case surrounding Venezuelan envoy Alex Saab. In June 2020, Saab was detained at the request of the United States in Cape Verde. Since then, Washington has exerted strong pressure on Cape Verdean authorities in an effort to obtain his extradition.
Colombia commemorated its National Human Rights Day on Thursday as statistics on police violence show the need for urgent reform within the institution. The absence of state guarantees to protect the lives of social and community leaders, human rights defenders and signatories to the peace accords adds to the situation of violence and human rights abuses. Our correspondent Hernan Tobar brings us more details. Daniel is a 20-year-old young man who was the victim of police brutality by the Mobile Anti-Disturbance Squadron during the events of May 1st while he was participating in a demonstration. Today, National Human Rights Day, he demands justice. In one of the protests, a mobile anti-disturbance squadron officer shot me directly in the face about 20 meters away. He shot me and essentially he affected many areas of my face. He affected my nose, broke my cheekbones, detached my upper jaw, I lost vision in my right eye, and I have 10 teeth affected due to the impact. I have already had five surgeries since the event. On September 9, 2020, police officers murdered Javier Ordonez in Bogota. So far, there has been only one conviction and 11 investigations. These violent actions sparked a social outcry and mobilizations against police brutality. In three days of protests, around 13 people died in the Colombian capital and the municipality of Soacha. Members of the police are being held responsible for the crimes. In the murders of September 9, 10, and 11 in Bogota and Soaca, there are no significant advances. Even several of the police officers still work in the vicinity where the events took place. A year after the murders, we continue with the victims, with their families, demanding the corresponding investigations and the victims of policy violence to have a justice. According to the Institute for Development and Peace Studies, so far in 2021, Colombia has recorded the murder of 115 social leaders and human rights defenders. 36 former combatants or peace signatories were killed, which shows the few guarantees for their lives and the ineffectiveness of the policies for the protection of these sectors. Unfortunately, in Colombia, especially in Cauca, human rights violations occur constantly. The latest massive displacements in the municipality of Argilia, due to the violent situation, the persecution and murder of social leaders, many of them had moved to other places, even left the country because of the violence they had experienced. In the framework of the 2021 nationwide strike and mobilizations, there were 4,687 cases of police brutality, at least 80 deaths and nearly 80 victims with injuries to their eyes. In many cases, victims filed complaints against the police forces. This situation demanded reforms within the police. The Congress is one of the key scenarios for this discussion and for the entity to be a defender of peace and coexistence without violating human rights. And we'll be right back after this very short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. South Africa on Friday launched the main phase of a global COVID-19 vaccine study on children and teenagers led by Chinese biopharmaceutical company Sinovac Biotech. The study is testing the efficacy of Sinovac's two-dose coronavac vaccine on 14,000 children aged between six months and 17 years in Chile, Kenya, Malaysia, the Philippines and South Africa. Coronavac is approved for use among adults in over 50 countries. China recently cleared it for use in children, where it's already been administered to millions from the ages of 3 to 17. South Africa, where vaccination has not yet been extended to under-18s, kicked off the study with two teenagers vaccinated at Pretoria Health Science University. We, we see a lot milder and less severe disease in children, but they still remain susceptible to infection. And because they remain susceptible to infection, we need to protect them because they are, in other words, getting the infection and they are able then to transmit it 
to the rest of the population, to other children and to adults. Vietnam's capital Hanoi is ramping up vaccination for local residents as authorities aim to inoculate all adults by September 15th. Hanoi's Department of Health has urged the authorities not to impose a limit on the number of people being vaccinated and to simplify procedures as vaccination has been conducted late into the evening in more than a thousand spots. According to Vietnam's national website on COVID-19 vaccination, more than 70% of people over 18 have received at least one jab in Hanoi, including people over 65 with chronic diseases. The country is battling its most serious COVID-19 outbreak so far, with the vast majority of the nearly 600,000 infections and more than 14,000 deaths since the beginning of the pandemic recorded in the past few months. At my age, it would be very dangerous if I get infected, so I really wanted to be vaccinated as soon as possible, but I have to follow the plan by the city authorities, depending also on the availability of vaccine. I am okay being vaccinated at this time. In some countries, they give priority to vaccinate people over 65. But the vaccination policy is flexible in different countries. I think it's not too late to be inoculated at this time, because our country gives priority to people who are in the front line to fight against the pandemic or workers. I think it's the right policy. In a bid to push for greater COVID-19 vaccination in the United States, President Joe Biden issued a no-jab, no-job ultimatum for the nation's largest employer, the federal government, as well as for federal contractors. The most sweeping mandate is a Labour Department rule requiring all private businesses with more than 100 employees make their workers get their shots or take weekly coronavirus tests with penalties of up to $40,000 per violation. The stringent new vaccine rules on federal workers, large employers and healthcare staff could apply to as many as 100 million Americans, close to two-thirds of the US workforce, and amount to Biden's strongest push yet to require vaccinations for much of the country. Biden said vaccinated America was growing frustrated with the 80 million people who have not received shots and are fueling the spread of the virus. The bottom line, we're going to protect vaccinated workers from unvaccinated co-workers. We're going to reduce the spread of COVID-19 by increasing the share of the workforce that is vaccinated in businesses all across America. Next, I will sign an executive order that will now require all executive branch federal employees to be vaccinated, all. And I've signed another executive order that will require federal contractors to do the same. If you want to work with the federal government and do business with us, get vaccinated. If you want to do business with the federal government, vaccinate your workforce. Cuba is set to receive humanitarian aid from fellow Caribbean nations, as announced by the Bolivarian Alternative for the Peoples of our America, People's Trade Treaty. Barbados, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines will send 3.5 tonnes of medical supplies donated to the people of Cuba through the humanitarian air bridge established by the Alba Bank, shipped by Venezuela's flagship airline Combiasa. On September 6, during the first summit between the Caribbean community and Africa, several CARICOM member states stressed the importance of solidarity with Cuba in the face of the US sanctions and the further difficulties posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have more stories coming up after this final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Israeli police said late Friday they had captured two of the six Palestinian prisoners who escaped from an Israeli jail earlier this week in an embarrassing security lapse for the regime. After an intense five-day manhunt, which saw more troops pour into the occupied Palestinian territory of the West Bank since Monday's breakout, Israeli police said the two were caught in the northern Israeli town of Nasserith. The Israeli army made more arrests on Friday of relatives of the escaped prisoners, according to the Palestinian Prisoners Club. Meanwhile, Palestinians continued to protest to call for the release of political prisoners in Israeli jails and in support of the jailbreakers following Friday prayers in Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque complex. And more than 2,000 Palestinian prisoners announced they will start a collective hunger strike in rejection of the brutal repression of the Israeli occupation and abuses against detainees. The Wayed Prisoners Association reported that the protests will begin in the early hours of Saturday. Meanwhile, the Israeli prison service transferred all Palestinian prisoners from the Jubera High Security Prison to other facilities following the prisoner escape.
And in this context, Palestinians rallied in most West Bank cities and villages and the besieged Gaza Strip in solidarity with Palestinian prisoners held by Israel and against their brutal mistreatment by the occupying forces. Since Monday's escape from Jibbera prison, the Israeli prison service has launched a campaign of repression with punitive measures against other Palestinian prisoners in flagrant violation of international conventions and agreements. The protests were as usual met with Israeli repression. This Friday saw protests in the UK capital, London, against a visit by far-right Chilean President Sebastian Piñera. The Chile Solidarity Network called for people to gather near Downing Street, the British Prime Minister's address, to reject the visit, which campaigners note was shrouded in secrecy for fears that human rights and environmental campaigners would gather at the sites of his scheduled meetings. It should be recalled that Piñera has a long record of crimes. On April 30, 2021, Chilean and human rights organisations, together with former Spanish judge Baltasar Garzón, filed an accusation before the International criminal court against the president for his alleged involvement in crimes against humanity during the widespread 2019 protests which were violently repressed by the Chilean police and security forces. Today because I am second generation Chilean exile, um, I arrived here at the age of five with my parents in 1978 um, and we have Sebastián Piñera visiting Boris Johnson today. Sebastián Piñera is, um, made his money from, firstly, the dictatorship, secondly, he's directly responsible for the human rights abuses that have been incur occurring in Chile for the last couple of years since the social uprising. Um, and I'm here to demonstrate my absolute disgust at Boris Johnson receiving somebody who's been investigated by human rights organisations worldwide. And following the rally outside Downing Street, protesters gathered outside the Chilean embassy in London for a vigil to mark the anniversary this Saturday of the September 11th, 1973 coup against the government of President Salvador Allende and to remember the victims of the Augusto Pinochet dictatorship. The Trades Union Congress, which represents five and a half million workers in the UK, issued a statement in solidarity with those seeking justice for the crimes of the Pinochet dictatorship and those committed under President Sebastián Piñera's administration, including calling for the release of all political prisoners in Chile. political prisoners in Chile and for full reparations for the victims of state brutality. Tomorrow, 11th of September, marks the 48th anniversary of the violent Pinochet coup which overthrew the democratic government of Salvador Allende and no doubt many Chileans will be remembering the dark days of repression and political violence that all hoped had been gone for good. The TUC notes that allegations of crimes against humanity have been brought against President Piñera at the International Criminal Court by a coalition of human rights organizations in Chile. We call on the British government to condemn the brutal actions of the Piñera administration, which in the words of Amnesty International, has misused the law to criminalize protesters and engaged in multiple instances of excessive use of force. And we've come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesoenglish.net. You can also follow us on social media for all the latest news. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Telegram. For Telesoenglish, I'm Katrina Goss. Thank you for watching.